Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance to Salga Shishir Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to this morning's Bhagavatam class. This morning we'll be continuing with Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 18, Verses 5 and 6. And the chapter is entitled, Maharaj Parikshit, Cursed by a Brahmin Boy. We are getting into the part where Maharaj Parikshit um, surrenders his kingdom, goes to listen to the sages, because he has only seven days. So we are in that pastime and we're very happy to have His Holiness Chandramali Swami with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you and all glory to your Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Vatkalir Nagavavit Vajastavata Sarvataha Yavari Shomaha Uryam Abhimanyava Ekarat Translation. As long as the great powerful son of Abhimanyu remains the emperor of the world, there is no chance that the personality of Kali will flourish. As we have already explained, the personality of Kali had entered the jurisdiction of this earth long ago, and he was looking for an opportunity to spread his influence all over the world. But he could not do so satisfactorily due to the presence of Maharaj Pariksha. That is the way of good government. <laughs> the disturbing elements like the personality of Kali will always try to extend their nefarious activities. But it is the duty of the able state to check them by all means. Although Maharaj Pariksha allotted places for the personality of Kali, at the same time he gave no chance for the citizens to be swayed by the personality of Kali. Marsh, do you want me to go to the next verse, Maharaj? Um, yeah, because they're connected. Sure, that's what I do. Okay, just want to make sure. Thank you, Marsh. Yeah. Yasmin Arhanti Aryevaha Bhagavan Utsa Sajagam Nadaivahanu Vito Sav Adharma Translation. The very next, the very day and moment, the personality of God and Lord Krishna left this earth. The personality of Kali, who promotes all kinds of irreligious activities, came into this world. Third point. The personality of God and in his holy name, qualities, etc are all identical. The personality of Kali was not able to enter the jurisdiction of the earth due to the presence of the personality of Godhead. And similarly, if there is an arrangement for the constant chanting of the Holy One, qualities, etc., of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there is no chance at all for the personality of Kali to enter. This is the technique of driving away the personality of Godhead in the world. If modernized human society, I'm sorry, in modernized human society, there are great advancements of material science, and they have invented the radio to distribute sound in the air. So instead of vibrating some nuisance sounds for sense enjoyment, if the state arranges to distribute transcendental sound by resounding the holy name, fame and activities of the Lord as they are authorized in the Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, then a favorable condition will be created. The principles of religion in the world will be reestablished. And thus the executive heads who are so anxious to drive away corruption from the world will be successful. successful. Nothing is bad if properly used for the service of the Lord. On the Gyan, Timiranda Syangyana Jana Salakaya, Chaksun Namitam Yenatas Mai Shri Gadavana Maha, Namaste, 
Gorvani Pachari Manyuga says a Sunya Vari Pastya Sitana. Vansha Kalpa the Rudeshati Bhav Sindhu Bhe Vaja Vitana Bhavani Jil Vaishnava Jil Namaha Maha Sri Krishna Jay Kanya Babu Hitna Bandha Sri Advaita Gadhar Sivasari Ulava the Vindha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama. Hmm. So, in reference to the previous verse, it's been mentioned that the personality of God had already entered the world. And that's also mentioned that as soon as the, per the Supreme Personality of God, and Sri Krishna, departed from the earth, the Personality of God had made his entrance. But he wasn't able to do anything because of the powerful leadership of such a great king, as it says here, the son of Abhimanyu, referring to the father of Maharaj Pariksit. Maharaj Pariksit had, as we heard from the previous chapter, a lot of places where Kali could reside. But still, he couldn't do anything because there was complete control by a righteous government, you might say, a God conscious government. And therefore, Maharaj Priksha was kind to give Kali a place to stay because Kali surrendered to the, to the king. And by way of surrender, he received the mercy and he was allowed to stay. But there was no place that he could distribute his influence. But then you'll see, and from this chapter as it goes on, Kelly uh, pollutes a young boy to curse the king, and the king is, he gives up his position, and then Kali Yuga comes in, in full force. So here, Prabhupada wants to make a nice point, and uh, that the way of good government is do not allow for the personality of God here. I'm sorry, the uh, personality of Kali to spread their influence everywhere. And what is the influence? We follow these principles as a foundation to keep the influence of Kali away. No illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat eating, no gambling. These four restrictions are foundational for a person to become single. In other words, in all, of, all of the simple activities are found within these four pillars of simple activity. So that's why that as devotees, we are, are free from the influence of Kali as long as we strictly, and I use the word with emphasis, follow these principles, which are foundational to bring about piety in the world. Therefore, uh, carefully following these instructions, we will um, flourish in our spiritual life and at the same time develop the good qualities and good character. The present age that we live in is now saturated with the influence of Kali. What is that saturation? The saturation is that um, people consider these activities to be the way of life. When Srila Prabhupada came to London, I'm sorry, not Srila Prabhupada, when Srila Prabhupada's God brothers before Prabhupada came, came to London back in the 1920s under the instructions of their spiritual master, Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Dakor. They met one uh, Lord, his name was Lord Jetlin. Lord Jetlin had spent some time in India and he knew a little bit about Indian culture, about Dominican culture. In the ensuing discussion, he asked, uh, the uh, devotee, the Prabhupada's godfather, can you make me a Brahmana? 
And the devotee said, yes, we can make you a woman. And the Lord said, oh, what do I do? You simply follow these restrictions. No illicit sex, no intoxication, no need eating, no gambling. When he heard that, the Lord responded, impossible. Impossible. In other words, these things are what, are what we live for. These are things that what we do to carry on our activities in life. And so, when Srila Prabhupada learned about the history, he said, I've come, when he came to the U.S., I've come to establish something impossible. But he said, let me try. And so, because of Srila Prabhupada's purity, and that purity inspired others to take up the pure life of devotional service. The Krishna conscious movement spread. And so these four activities were the personification of Kali's influence in this world. And you find it today everywhere. That's why there are so many problems. Material nature, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Maya Dakshena Prakriti, Suyate Sacharacharam, He Tunam and Kuntaya Vichigavi Parvi Partante, that this material energy is my energy and it's working under my direction. It's producing all moving and non moving beings. By its will, it's created and destroyed. By my will, it's created and destroyed uh, again and again. So this material energy is Krishna's energy, and he controls the energy through the process of the three modes of material energy, nature, which a lot the, the activities of a particular person are result according to how they connect with a particular mode. The mode of goodness is the mode of intelligence, good qualities, um, what do you say, a type of material peace and happiness that comes with it, charity, um, higher and more good values in life, um, such as literature and uh, culture, like that, people who take part in the mode of goodness. Of course, as it says in the scriptures, the mode of goodness is conspicuous by its absence. Uh, one minute. You can take that uh, squirt bottle. Yeah. Yeah. And then wash the plate and then dry it with that pink rag and with the, the bottle of the bowls too. Okay. Excuse me. Now we're back. And so these um, mode of goodness is not very much prominent in the world today. So the mode of passion is most prominent. And when the mode of passion is prominent, people work very hard to enjoy their senses. It's a extreme uh, attachment for sense enjoyment and material accumulation to enjoy various types of material amenities and the senses, the mind, and the intelligence. The mode of ignorance is destructive. Intoxication, uh, excess sleep, laziness, harmful activities upon others. This is the mode of ignorance. So these two modes are somewhat prominent in the world because people don't follow the religious principles. Therefore, they gravitate into the into the effects of these lower modes, and therefore. The present world situation is abominable. And because of that, people suffer. The governments are also like the people. They think to propagate uh, material activities with the desire to enjoy will give people happiness and success in life. Of course, it never has, but that is the propaganda of today's world. So the Krishna Conscious Movement is taking a stand against Kali Yuga. 
The Kali's Kali's powerful. And she has her agents. He has his agents. He Kali is a personality. He has his agents. And his agents are Tama, Soda, Roha, Madha, Mohan, and Matsarya. What are those agents? Lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, and envy. These are the agents of Kali, which he spreads everywhere through these sinful activities. And people adopt these things as a way of life in order to facilitate their desire to enjoy this material world. So um, Lord Prabhupada makes a point um, in the previous verse, in the next verse, verse number six, um, that uh, if the leaders of today's society, now Prabhupada is very bold. He said, if the, if the leaders of society will simply take the mechanical and electronic technical instruments that have been given and use them to spread the transcendental sound, the holy name, fame, qualities, and activities of the Supreme Lord, then the, the world would, would push back the effects of Kali in a favorable condition. It would be there. Prabhupada gives some credit. He says, the executive heads are uh, anxious to drive away corruption from the world. If they are anxious, they will be successful in this process. Why don't they take it up? Because it's not good business, not profitable. And they see it that way. And they also think it is something extra and something that people can do on their own, but it should not be established as a principle, as a way of life. Therefore, when Srila Prabhupada came, he came with an idea to, as he said, turn the whole world upside down by establishing Krishna consciousness through the knowledge given in Bhagavad Gita by Krishna directly and Srimad Bhagavatam all about Krishna's transcendental activities and the qualities and activities of the spirit of Lotus. So here, if devotees want a peaceful life in themselves, then they say they should at least spread this amongst themselves and as much as they can. So we become, in one sense, the force by which the Supreme Personality of Godhead spreads his influence through the Sankirtan movement. And therefore it's incumbent upon each and every devotee who has this knowledge to make an effort to practice this very carefully, take sufficient time and learn Bhagavad Gita, anything like Bhagavatam. The Prabhupada spent the most precious time of the day, that is when people are sleeping, and usually from midnight to about four o'clock in the morning, uh, studying the um, books of the previous acharyas who give their comment on the verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam and then carefully applying his Bhakti Vedanta purpose based on their commentaries and adding to it and establishing his version of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which has become successful. So the Prabhupada has given us almost the entire Bhagavatam. And his devotees, his followers, who follow very carefully in his footsteps and finish their treatment by it very nicely. But this first canto is very uh, foundational to understand the whole science of Bhagavad you know, Gita. It's found in the first canto. And Srila Shil Prabhupada said repeatedly, I have given you all the knowledge you need to know in the first he said, the rest is simply a repetition of what I have given in the first canto, but it's connected to many of the different pastimes of the Lord. But the essence is there in the first canto. And so the process is simple, to glorify the Supreme Person. And it's susukam kartamagyayam. It's a very joyful process. 
to work to enjoy sense gratification is a very arduous program. People want to enjoy their senses, but they don't know how. And so assembly, they're always recreating or creating new ideas on how to enjoy the senses. Because the senses can never be satisfied by material activities. And therefore, what's created has to be recreated in a different way in order to bring some kind of newness, which brings some kind of idea that this is different. So they're always trying to recreate the same thing, illicit sex, intoxication, gambling, and meat eating, which are the foundation. And so Kali spreads his influence through these and along with his shikshas, lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, and envy. All of these are Kali's agents, which he's dispatched throughout the world. This is Kali's age. Um, but Kalir Dosha Midi Rajan Astiakum Mahagun Kirtanai the Krishna's yeah Mukta Sangam Brahmagan. Um this verse is fundamental, spoken by Sukadev Goswami to Maharaj Pariksha. Kalir Dosha Midi. Kalir, he says, O oh, king, referring no Kali, Kali. Kalir Dosha Midi Rajan. Rajan means king. Uh, in this age of Kali. Okay, there is um, an ocean. Hello, Dosha Midi. Dosha means false. Midi means ocean. There's an ocean of false in this age. But what is that? Clear Dosha Midi. Asti Echo Mahagun. So there is one Gun, not Gun, but Mahagun. Gun means benediction. Maha means great. What is that? Echo. One, this one. Kirtana uh, Eva Krishna Sya, the chanting of the holy names of the Lord, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. What is the result? That one can purify themselves and qualify to enter into the kingdom of God. Otherwise, one can associate with the Lord directly through his holy name. Associating with the Lord means to be free from the influence of Kali, although Kali is all around. Kali cannot touch those who take shelter in Krishna through the holy name and the process of bhakti. Um, just like when you're in a rainstorm, it may be pouring rain, but if you have proper cover, you know, umbrella and whatever else you need to insulate yourself from the rain, then you stay dry, although it's raining. So in the same way, the rain of Kali is everywhere. Even in the holy dome, we find Kali's influence is also there. But still, um, she'll go everywhere. Or he'll go everywhere. He's not a she. Maya is a she. Kali is a he. And Kali is very, quite vicious in spreading his poison everywhere. And the, uh, the chanting of the holy name of the Lord yeah, will push back the effects of Kali Yoga. As it says that this this holy name is an incarnation of the Lord, because when Krishna left the planet, he left himself in the form of Sri Bhagavatam, as explained by Bhagavatam himself. For those who take shelter of the message of Bhagavatam, and what is Bhagavatam's message to glorify the supreme personality of Godhead through the process of service, and the essence of that. Mentioned in the Bhagavatam is to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Uh, this is Kali's um, blockade. Can't get through that. In fact, the holy name is so powerful and so complete in its protection that even if someone tries to kill you, if you take shelter of the holy name, you'll be fully protected by that by that influence. Holy name is very powerful. It's Krishna himself. There's no difference. Um, uh, what is that verse? Nama Chintamani Krishna, Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha, Purnya Sudya Nitya Mukta, Abhinna Twam Nami Nama. Bhinna means different. Abhinna means the same, without difference. 
for the name of the Lord and the Lord are in absolute. How can we understand that from our conviction state? We can. We can uh, try to analyze it, try to philosophize it. It's not possible. The only way you can understand it is an experience. It's only that way because it's transcendental. And the mind, the senses, the intelligence, or even the imagination cannot reach to the understanding of the Holy Name. Only the experience of the Holy Name uh, awakens one to the, the Holy Name's power and potency. So therefore, one has to chant. Seriously. And here, as Prabhupada said, arrangement, the society should make, make for arrangement for constant chanting of the Holy Name. It's an interesting, we are 5,000, about 135 years into the age of Kali. So in that, this age is the smallest of all the four ages, 432,000 years. But it's interesting that already in only 5,000 plus years, Kali's influence is everywhere. So just imagine as time goes on. But Lord Chaitanya has come in this age with Priti Vityachi Nagarati Gram, and he's going to spread, he's going to arrange for his mission to be spread throughout the world. So in this particular age of Kali, as different from all of the previous ages of Kali, there is a golden age for 5,000 years, up 5,000 years down. That means from the time that Lord Chaitanya appeared in 1486, for 5,000 years, there will be an increase of Krishna consciousness throughout the world. But Kali knows that. He's intelligent. He knows that Krishna is present in the form of this this kind of movement. Therefore, he's working a little extra harder to push his movement as fast as he can. You'll see if you read the Bhagavatam, you'll see it describes in the twelfth canto the characteristics of the age of Kali. In the eleventh canto, it describes these same characteristics but it applies more to the, to the age that we live in, and that is this particular age. In other words, when Lord Chaitanya is here. So this, um, so Kali is um, moving fast. He's entering everywhere. And he's, he's got his agents. So we, we can stay strong and be free from the influence of Kali. By every day, with attention, with devotion, and with, with as much uh, uh, seriousness as we can, chant the holy names of the Lord Japa, and come together and have kirtan. Just like I'm here in Sri Vrindavan, and there is a 24-hour kirtan that goes on constantly. There's no break in the third time. It goes on for 20 hours. A group of dedicated devotees sit in the temple. We chant throughout the whole day, in the evening, the night. It goes on day after day. It was established in 1982 by one great devotee who now left the word. His name was Ayendra. And since then, it's, it's developed into a constant program. Of chanting. So Kali still tries to make his entrance. He looks around, he looks for, and you'll see how Kali works. In this, in this chapter, will indicate how Kali influences persons to act in the wrong way. Um, just to fast forward a little bit, Kali somehow or other influenced a Brahmin boy, he was only 12 years old, to act in the wrong way. He was a Brahmana, he was a son of a great Rishi, and uh, he acted, it, it's, it will be explained, and he acted just to impress his fellow playmates. He was only 12 years old. 
just to show his dramatages. And he did something that his father regretted and later on apologized for. But uh, Maharaj Pariksit took the opportunity to go back home, back to Godhead by this situation. But the point was that Kali looks for people who are weak or who are, what we say, influenceable. And then he comes in and he somehow or other spreads his dharma, adharma, step by step. If he tries to rush in and attack the devotees all at once, the devotees can see Kali and they completely avoid it. But Kali is, knows how to do it in a very uh, secret way, a very less obvious way, that causing people to act against religious principles and making it think it's still a religious principle. Just, I'll give you an, an example of how Kali works. Kali's, one of Kali's propaganda is do away with authority. Do away with authority. You are intelligent. You are your own person. You know how to make decisions. Therefore, why should you allow authority to rule your life? Therefore, and of course, the whole thing was do your own thing. We hear that. Do your own thing. Be your own man. Be your own woman. In other words, uh, reject authority because authority um, may be good, but many, many times we find it's not. Well, oh, just do your own thing. But then Kali reestablishes that same principle of authority by, by giving people ways to reject authority and then take up uh, Ill irreligious or sinful activity. So he becomes the authority. At the same time, he takes he tells people to reject him. And you'll see that everywhere in the world now, wherever there is authority, there is a there is a reaction against it. Whether it's in the family, in the society, in the nation, in the world. Uh, and um, so authority is simply thrown to the wind in the name of freedom. Just like why should you uh, why should you marry the opposite sex? Who says you have to have I mean, you have to marry a man or a woman? You can you can marry the same sex. I think it's a connection problem. Maharaj just froze, so we will wait patiently. I apologize, devotees. I think there was a um, Wi-Fi issue, internet issue on Maharaj's side because he's in Sri Vandavandam. But we can patiently wait and Maharaj will be back. I'm very sure of that. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, there's Maharaj, okay. Maharaj, you're on mute just to let you know, Maharaj, sorry. Kali tried to cut me off. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing, Kali was doing a, a thing again. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, he's there everywhere. <laughs> All right, right, so we'll up for discussion.
Thank you so much, Marge. Uh, lots of points, amazing points. Thank you so much. And really um, explaining the what's going to be, you know, what we are in and what to expect and how to push it back. And thank you for explaining the personality of uh, Kali, as we have heard. Would like to add, I'm, I'm going to stop sharing and requesting devotees, if you can please um, turn on your video wherever possible so that we can have each other's association, each other's darshan, and Maharaj can see us. And also, if there are any questions, any clarification, any doubts, please do uh, raise your hand. Uh, we have about a very good amount of 30, uh, 31 participants. Yes, Namrata, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, you mentioned leaders of the society can use the modern day technology to spread Krishna consciousness, as said by uh, Srila Prabhupada. Uh, in his time, radio was a uh, radio typewriter, all this was all these things were being used. So in present day, there are a lot other facilities and technologies which is developed, but at the same time, we are prone to get addicted because of course, <laughs> because of the Kali, we, we can uh, get addicted to that. So how much, um, how can we um, take care that we should not get prone to this technology uh, while spreading Krishna consciousness? Okay, it's a good question in the sense that the facility to scan the internet with a variety of activities are all, uh, has been given in such a profuse way that uh, you can spend all day on the computer. There's one example where one boy, college student, he went on the computer and he stayed on for three days straight. We could, we didn't eat, didn't sleep, didn't do anything. At the end of the third day, he collapsed. Uh, he was in the dormitory, and his uh, fellow students found him and brought him to the hospital. They saved his life, but he was on the verge of death. So these, this is an extreme example of how one can become, well, as, as you said, addicted to this like, electronic media. Uh, there are many examples that I've experienced with people in general and with persons that I know that cannot live or apparently cannot continue to go on unless they have their media available at the time. But to use the uh, safe is that use it only when necessary for Krishna consciousness. So um, uh, I'll give you, I'll use myself as a personal example. Maybe that would be it. I just use my computer to store information that I receive that might be helpful in different topics. And I use it for emails and for the Zoom calls. That's all. I don't go anywhere on the internet looking for the most exciting news in this country. <laughs> it's not so exciting a lot of times. And uh, a lot of times you find yourself in a particular situation where you're hearing criticism that is really, really bad for our Krishna consciousness. So be frugal in using it. Um, also, it's not healthy. <laughs> to spend so much time on these on these medias. It's not good for the back. It's not good for the, for the eyes. And also it's not good for the mind if it's spend too much time. It makes the mind tired as soon as you get off. <laughs> so um, again, I just use it for emails, um, storing some relevant information that I might use in the future for preaching or for having or study and 
um, to preach Krishna consciousness, such as these calls that we do every day. That's all. Same with my phone. My phone stays off during my Japa period. And then I check my messages. And um, sometimes I respond, sometimes I don't. And that's all I use the phone for. I hardly ever call anybody on my phone. Once a week. So keep it at a minimum. You have to see, you're just wasting time. And it becomes like a, an infatuation. I have to see what's going on in the rest of this time or somewhere in the world. So, uh, yeah. A small follow up, um, a sadhaka uh, many times use uh, like the mediums like YouTube and blogs and all to associate with other devotees' lectures or articles or so. So, um, this is one way to, of association as well, but I think uh, that should be used in a balanced way. Is it that? Why not associate with the people around you instead of doing it on the internet? There's devotees everywhere around you. They get more personal. Uh, I, I don't I don't go on social media. People monitor my social medias and they put my classes and lectures in them. And I never see it. I never go on any of these social media. It's a waste of time. You want to be social? Hey, you got people right with you. Talk to them. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Somehow we lived without these things years ago. Somehow life went Now we yeah. think life is the one. That's Kali. Kali is telling you half the hand. Otherwise, yeah. you have to. It's another one of those propagandas. They're not necessary. We are just making it necessary. Not yeah. even necessary in any sense of it. Yes. Spend time Thank you, Maharaj. Spend spending time yes. with some electronic box. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Namrata. Nice question. Um, Sri Devi, please go ahead, Mother. Thank you, Anasuya. Please accept my humble obeisance, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, who is the personality of Kali? I understand that this is his age, so he's there. But who is he in uh, Krishna Leela? Who is he in Ram Leela? Is he there in other ages at all? Or he has just come in this age? He's called Papa Purush. That's his name. Papa means simple. Purush means personality of sin. There's a whole story about the person Papa Purush also in relationship to a codice. Mm -hmm. Where Vishnu chastised him and told him that if you want a place to reside, you can reside uh, where people take grains on the Akadasi door. Mm -hmm. That's another story. I I I have that on on paper, it's, uh, it's interesting. So personality of sin, that's all he is. Just like there's personality of uh, goodness. We have, uh, you know, you have Lakshmi, we have um, the various expansions of Lakshmi, Saraswati. So um, Maya expands into the various personalities of herself. And the more people become addicted to sinful activities, the more they degrade themselves. But ultimately, all living entities is Krishna's part and parcel. But these agents of sin 
simply do the work of the demons. There's a class of people called demons. They exist as a class. A demon is not something that's created. It's something that is actually indigenous to life itself. There are planets where demons are born. They circulate the lower places around the earth. We have Rakshashas, you have Usmandas, you have Jinns, you have, um, and there's a whole list of names of these different personalities who are of demoniac nature. They live in the lower planetary systems, and some of them live right close to the earth in invisible planets, too, and they also enter into the earth planet. When, when the karmic collection goes down, more sinful people are born. It's like it's mentioned in the Bhagavad that when there are calamities on earth, like natural disasters, big ones, these are indications that of demons are born on the earth. When that was in, re, in, re, in relationship to uh, Rani Kashipu and Rani Aksha when they appeared. There were kind of calamities in the, in the natural environment. So you get a lot of calamities now. And these are also indications of demons appearing on this earth. But they have their own planets also. So how he works to uh, serve the demon. Right. Just like um, I think I brought this verse at least before, but maybe I will see you can bring up the verse again. Seventh chapter, first chapter, verse number eight. Seven one eight. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could read it in the translation. March seven, Canto, first chapter. chapter. Verse number eight. Verse number eight. Oh, really? When the quality of goodness is prominent, the sages and demigods flourish with the help of that quality, in with which they are infused and surcharged by the Supreme Lord. Similarly, when the mode of passion is prominent, the demons flourish. And when ignorance is prominent, the yakshas and rakshashas flourish. The supreme personality of God is present in everyone's heart, fostering the reactions of sattvaguna, rajaguna, and tamaguna. So he puts these three modes in place, and people act accordingly. They plug into a certain mode, they get a certain reaction, and a certain quality becomes prominent according to the collective karma of that activity. So right now we see, using the example of modern day society, the, the demons are prominent because the mode of passion is very strong. It's most very strong. And it's also influenced by the mode of ignorance. Krishna's neutral. Hope that helps, Sri Devi. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. You can read it, uh, on your own, it's a long purple. Read the purple and you'll get a, a little greater insight on what that verse is going to be about. I just posted 718, the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, Verse that March was quoting in the group chat so that devotees can have reference to the Canto chapter and verse 718. Thank you. March, there is a comment here by Vrishabhadas, and it's interesting because it got me thinking. He said, Interesting how small Brahmana boy with such Brahminical power and qualities was weak minded. So my question, I'm sorry, Marsh, go ahead. 
Yeah, any question? So, Mar Marge, if that is the case, that, you know, a 12-year-old Brahmana boy with such, you know, son of a Brahmin with such strong Brahminical powers and qualities, and he just wanted to show off kind of a thing with this, to his fellow mates was weak-minded. So is that the beginning, Marge, of um, yeah. the fall down of the Brahminical uh, uh, class? Yeah, yeah, that's mentioned very uh, repeatedly as the as you get into the verse. Yeah, then the whole caste system came in. And people who were born in the Brahminical family were automatically considered the brothers. Because uh, these the religion, we are not uh, we are not uh, Hindus or anything. We are Prabhupada's talking to he said. The religion of India is Varnashram. Four Varnas, four Ashrams, the foundation by which society uh, practices the, the needs of society and at the same time executes devotional service. Four Ashrams, well, these are the foundation. Now, Prabhupada's program to re Spiritualize the world was to establish Daivi Rana. It was to bring, to train a class of people into Brahminical qualities where they could lead the society and then let them teach and uh, evaluate the rest of society to give them an understanding of what their Varna is, whether they're Shatri or Vaishya, like that. So uh, the weak-minded boy was, he heard that his father was insulted by this king. And as it was explained that Maharaj Pariksit acted uh, unusually. He apparently was thirsty, came into the hermitage. Uh, the sage was in meditation, didn't notice him. And therefore, he felt insulted, not getting noticed. He picked up with his sword and saw a dead snake in the area, picked it up, and he put it around the neck of the sage, and he left. When the little Brahmin boy heard about that, he became very angry. And to show off his power, he cursed the king. But at the same time, he was also disturbed that his father was insulted. When he told his father, his father immediately uh, said, oh, he became so sorry to hear that. You have cursed this, this great king. Um, that was the beginning of the degradation of the Vanarshan system. And so Kali has thrown that thing up in the air. Uh, you know, nobody knows what their ashram is, they don't know what their varna is. <laughs> People do whatever they want to do. Therefore, society is topsy turvy. So Prabhupada wanted to reestablish it, but he knew he couldn't do it in the material world or through preaching. He did. He wanted to do it through the through the devotees by establishing by the devotion. And he said, in order to do that, we have to establish these foreign communities, which are the basis of value by mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank he you. Seemed, yeah. The whole process, whole movement was to educate people to come up to the standards of being Brahmins, developing the quality of a Brahmin, and then having that leadership uh, category within the society to train and direct the rest of the society accordingly. So an actual perfect society, you'll, you'll come across, I think you probably already came across it in the 17th chapter. It's mentioned, there are three characteristics that make up a perfect society. One is Brahminical culture. Two is cow care, cow protection. And three is worship of the supreme personality of God. 
These are the three features that make up a wholesome society. We have the social, we have the spiritual, we have everything in those three. Brahmins give direction, the cows uh, provide nutritious food for people to become healthy, fertilize the fields, uh, their presence and causing the auspiciousness wherever they are. And uh, um, and worship of the Supreme Lord, the ocean to the Lord. I'm sure you read that, right? In the 17th chapter. Yes, Marge, we did. And okay. I have to confess that it's, I, I just remember the first one. So thank you for bringing it up and helping us remember. So, Marge, you said it's the, spirit, the spiritual life, the cows, and the worship of the Lord, the Brahminical culture. Brahminical culture means patan patan yajan yajan to to um, know the scriptures to teach the scriptures to worship the supreme lord to teach worship of the supreme lord to give in charity and to give and to accept charity mm. these are the six activities of the political culture and they provide so many things. They give education, they give medical care, astrological predictions. Um, this is the nature of the Brahminical class. They don't take a salary for anything we do. They simply live on the basis of receiving uh, uh, donations from people in society. They don't work. They guide the rest of society through scripture and through their own example. Thank you, Marge. Thank you for bringing that point up for us as a review. Thank you. Marge, there's a question in the chat by Hema Mataji, and she says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for an enlightening class. My question was on chanting. If someone is very connected to Kirtan and Japa box, Love listening all the time, but is not able to chant on Japa beats. Oops, I think I missed it. Okay, there. Is not able to chant on Japa beats. How long should one persevere with them to encourage mm -hmm. them to chant on the beats? Any suggestion on inspiring them to chant? Or should we just leave them to develop taste for chanting as they keep listening? Well, you have to know the person. I would say... To use a very general statement, we say every once in a while encourage them to chant, but don't force them because force usually brings about a reaction where people resist force, or if they do accept it out of force, they just do it because they're forced. To. Best to just um, continue on with the program and then encourage them whenever you find the opportunity. Yeah, make favorable suggestions. It depends who that person is, whether it's a family member, a friend, or somebody that you know. I, I think that's a point that many youth sometimes struggle, or parents, you know, who have youth like that. We we see that happening in today's generation sometimes. Yeah. Well, somebody was telling me, yeah. That, uh, well, it's quite obvious that people, um, especially among the youth, they're very keen on kirtan. And in fact, they actually propagate kirtan when it comes to japa. Many times, they're, they're there's no big bag. <laughs> but Sheila you know, Prabhupada has given us Lord Chaitanya's formula, both Japa. Lord Chaitanya also said that Japa on beads. Along with, we know him for Kirtan, but Japa was also there. So it's a two-part process. 
of chanting both individually and collectively. One of the things I recently heard is that we don't go out enough and chant like we used to. And that's one of the reasons why our movement is somewhat stagnant in many places. Some temples, for instance, uh, I'll give you an example in London, the Soho Street Temple, they do kirtan every day. And other places, they it's not even happening at all. So for the general population and for the purification of the devotees, kirtan. One minute, I need to take a break for some. Yeah. I have a really nice devotee here. He's from uh, Kenya. He's been helping me get things together. Thank you, Marge. In, uh, Hema Mata, you said it's her brother who really wants to connect but can't chant. No, well, because there's a relationship there. I would say every once in a while you shouldn't try to encourage him. Say things that might inspire him to chant. Thank you, Marge. Sri Devi, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah, but my question was off topic, so it's not appropriate, I believe. Oh, okay. That's fine. Any other questions from devotees? Anything that's coming to your mind that you need clarification on this topic or any topic, it doesn't matter. Please uh, do raise your hand or um, you can put in the chat and I'll be happy to read it. Uh, Rishabh Dav, Dav said that um, youth love experience, not philosophy. Yes. In fact, I, I was uh, uh, this past, I wasn't here, but this past weekend, March, we had um, Arjun Saka, Armarendra Prabhu's uh, brother, had a session with the youth here, um, closed door, and then um, the, with, the, with, the, with the congregation later in the afternoon for the Sunday program. And what I heard, and then next day he met, a couple of days he was here and he met me because I wanted to know what, you know, what was discussed. And he was, and I, I got a couple of feedback from some of the youth. And the first thing that Arjun Sakha asked the youth when they had this closed door private um, session was, what are your services and how many rounds do you chant? Because he said that many of the youth is they all want to be followers of Aindra Prabhu, but they don't know that Aindra Prabhu also did menial services, did deity service, chanted his japa, and took care of deity worship, not just, um, you know, kirtan. So he was telling the youth that, uh, you know, you just can't do kirtan and then your japa suffers because they are not separate, they are connected. So he got the youth to start chanting Japa every morning. So they have their own uh, Japa Sangha call that they all join and chant their rounds. And uh, he is encouraging them to do more service and uh, to hear, also to increase their hearing because he realized that the youth are not hearing enough and not reading enough. So he was saying that just because we do kirtan and that, that doesn't mean that the japa suffers, the, the services suffers and the hearing and reading suffers. They're all on the same platform. So he spent, I think, about two hours or two and a half hours, something like that, with the youth on Sunday. And then he spent four hours with some of the youth from Harrisburg that went to New Jersey for about, he said, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., really drilling them on the essence of... Uh, Japa, reading, hearing, and service, not just kirtan. <laughs> Who was that that did that? Harmarendra Prabhu's brother, Arjun Saka. What's his name? Arjun Saka. Okay. 
Um, I think I might have met him. I met our Melinda on Sunday in Mumbai this past Sunday. And I met his whole family too. There was 10 of them. I think his brother was there. I'm not sure. His brother lives in um, Seattle, Washington, Maharaj. Yeah. Well, he lives in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Yes. Yes. So, um, yeah, he did a good session with the youth here. I was happy. Nice. Nice. So I, I I think that's one uh, that's one thing that I think uh, today's generation like, which I think uh, Mataji was mentioning and Rishav Das was mentioning that it's the connection I think because I think the youth think that Japa and Kirtan are different. You can do one or the other. <laughs> they go together. Yes. Because it's the process given to us by the spiritual master. We can't cut and paste and then say it's okay. You have to take the process as given. So when it comes to chanting, there is individual chanting and congregational chanting. Yes. And I I find that both support each each other. Yeah. Yes, March. I, you're you're right. They go hand in hand. Yeah, we should uh, understand that this job is really sweet if we give it a chance. And just practice it. Um, but the youth have this conception that a lot of times they want to become popular by kirtan. Yes, Maharaj. That's this celebrity consciousness. <laughs> mm. The celebrity culture, as they call it. Yes, Maharaj, that's so true. That's so true. Sri Devi, please Thank go you. ahead. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, would chanting be also considered a service? <laughs> it, it, it is the service itself. It is the epitome of service. Yeah. Atasi Krishna Narmadi Nadavya Jayavinya Seva Vimukti Hijiva Do Swayam Meva Sparatya Da Seva Jiva Do Jiva Do means service that begins with the tongue. Jiva, Jiva means tongue, Jiva, J-I-V-H-O, Jiva Do. So that's where service begins by glorifying the Lord. Chanting his holy name, his fame, qualities. That is service. No? That's the foundation by which all service springs from. It's the essence. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for asking that, that, that question, Sri Devi. Very powerful. <laughs> It may have been simple, but it's very powerful. Thank you. Very deep. Thank you. Any other questions from devotees? Any uh, clarification? Any doubts? Please uh, do raise your hand. And um, before we go into our... Yes, Prickshit, go ahead. Krishna Maharaj, please accept my whole obeisances. All glories to Shiva Prabhupada. So um, the... Shema Bhavatam reference that you gave to us, chapter, Canto 7, Chapter 1, Text 8. Um, the different modes, um, and especially the mode which is the modes which are prevalent now, which is the modes of passion and ignorance. Passion, those who are in passion worship demons. Then I was thinking, but the deity for the mode of passion or the one that controls motor passion is supposed to be Lord Brahma. And Brahma is the, the head of this universe. So 
Of course, the Brahma that we have here is pretty much pure devotee. Brahma, Gaudiya, Sampada is what we follow. And so my mind is like going, well, how is Brahma uh, connected with this whole idea of, of mode of passion, which is prevalent on the earth, on this particular planet of his universe? And can he make a big difference since he's so much in control of it anyway? Well, yeah, obviously, yeah. He is the controller of the mode, but he is not in the mode. Just like Shiva is the controller of the mode of the things, but he's not in that mode. Vishnu is the controller of the mode of goodness, but he is suicide, but he's above goodness also. So these are these are the persons who control that mode on behalf of the Lord. They do the work of the Lord in the in the material world by facilitating that particular mode. Of it. Thank you, Marge. Um yeah, they're just more or less the uh, the how do you say it? The, uh, the mode of passion works in a certain way, and Brahma controls how it works. Mm. Okay. All right. But none of these controllers are in those modes. Mm. Just like the intended of jail, maybe inside the jail, but he's not a person. <laughs> yeah. That's that's when you explain us exactly how I thought about it. Thank you for giving the example. That was a nice question. Thank you for clarifying it for me. So I'm sure many of us benefited from that. Yes, Sri Devi, please go ahead. Guru Maharaj, for the golden age to come about, what do we as grand disciples of Srila Prabhupada need to do to bring that about? The holy name and start the function. Sorry, I can catch that. Spread the holy name everywhere and anywhere. Hey, Bo! Goranga! Thank you, Guru Maharaj. And, uh, and begin these farm communities and spread the, the, uh, these farm communities and start, establish diving areas. That was a nice question, Sri Devi. Because I've been asked that question too. What will? What do we have to do? <laughs> so thank you for uh, asking that question. Thank you. Yeah, the holy name start from our communities. Okay. That's what Maharaj said. Yep. Yeah, just repeating. Prabhupada said, "The unfinished business of my mission is Daivi Ashram, which is." Uh, start we build these farm communities and uh, create uh, these colleges to educate people in, in the in the different environments. Within the Iskan society, some leaders are actually pushing it; others are avoiding it. Um, it's interesting how our society is not unified in this particular. But Prabhupada said this we have to establish these communities and of course the chanting of the holy name spread it everywhere. Wherever there's kirtan, everything is auspicious. Uh, I would suggest that anybody who has influence in any of your temples where you are, uh, of course, in Vrindavan, they chant 24 hours here. In Mayapur, they also have many programs for chanting. But it seems like in many of our temples around the world, we don't do anything in the evening. We might have a Bhagavad Gita class. Prabhupada writes, uh, uh, 
Here's another verse you can see. You can March, I missed the verse you said. Chaitanya Charita Mita, Madhya uh -huh. Leela, chapter 3, verse 203. 203, verse 203. Yes, Marge, I'm going to share that now. This one's for you, honestly. Okay, okay. read the translate. You get, I'm going to let you read it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can read Marge. Uh, chapter CC Madhalila, chapter 3, verses 203, translation by Sri Prabhupada. In this way, all the opulence of Advaita Charya, his faith, devotion, home, riches, and everything else was successfully utilized in the worship of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Purport. Advaita Charya. Yeah an ideal example for all householder devotees in his reception of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees and in his execution of a daily festival at his home. Ah, a daily festival at his home. If one has the proper means and wealth, he should occasionally invite the devotees of Lord Chaitanya who are engaged in preaching all over the world and hold the festival at home simply by distributing prasadam and talking about Krishna during the day and holding congregational chanting for at least three hours in the evening. This procedure must be adopted in all centers of the Krishna conscious movement. Thus, they will perform Sankirtan Yagna in Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter, Canto 11, Chapter 5, Verse 32. The daily performance of Sankirtan Yagna is recommended for this age. Yagne Sankirtana Prayer Yajanti Hi Sus Medasha. One should worship Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his four associates, the Panchatattva, by distributing prasadam and holding congregational chanting. Indeed, that yagna on sacrifice is, not, is most recommended in this age of Kali. In this age, other yagnas are not possible to perform, but this yagna can be performed everywhere and anywhere without difficulty. Prabhupada makes the point, this procedure must be adopted in all our sun and all of our temples. Are we doing it? <laughs> Hare Krishna. So, Maharaj, so that means home programs then? Because I'm reading the top part of it. Yeah, that's home programs, temple programs. There should be given time every day. Uh, Rishabh wants to know what verse it is. Post them. Thank you, much. Which okay, Rishabh Prabhu, it's the uh, CC Madhya Leela. I'm typing it three. Okay, Suri Dev is blinding me for some reason. Uh, to three, two or three. I need to shift because Suradev is blinding me. <laughs> there we go. Now I can see. Okay. Yes, that's the verse, Rishabh Prabhu. Thank you. Any other questions from devotees? Any thoughts? Any clarification? Okay, there's another thing that came through. Oh, no problem, Prabhu. No problem. 
if there isn't, Maharaj, would you like to end with a round of chanting, Maharaj? <laughs> Since we talked about chanting quite a bit in today's class, right? <laughs>